Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Academic Excellence, Preparing Your Child for Academic Excellence. Before we go on to what we have today, I'd like to run through what we did in episode 1. In episode 1, we said that there are four major learning styles that your child may be exhibiting right now. That if you discovered it, it will help your child learn better and inch them closer towards academic excellence. Now, that is, there are four and they V, V stands for visual learner. They like to see the point. They like to see what they're learning. They, they like to, you know, see it, right? So you give them resources like charts, maps, illustrations, diagram. It really, really brings home the point. Colorful diagram, you know, and one way to also help them is to give them colors, make a color that talks about a certain thing different from the other color. Understanding this will help you to provide the right resources at home for your child to learn. Then there is the auditory learner, the child who learns by hearing, by speaking. So this child wants to be in class and this child can also read and understand through recitals, songs or something that's really, really that, that they can read aloud and read to themselves. So group discussions for example benefit them so much right and they also uh when they read sometimes you find them reading aloud because they want to hear what they are reading that's when it sticks then there is the read the reader slash writer this one wants to read research and write what they have read and that's how it sticks right so this kind of learner tries best you can say this person is a solo learner they want to stay in a place that is quiet no disturbance just want to learn by themselves at their pace they read they understand they make notes and it drives home the point so if this is your child you might want to get them reading writing materials maybe with colorful bios that help them get interested in writing and writing concept differently you know all these people that write topic with red bio yeah I, I i did that new splash and then the last is a kinesthetic reader who likes to touch who likes to act, you know who likes activity activity is the word this is what drives home the point drives home the lesson so if you show them what you're trying to describe it's easier for them to understand than just merely telling them so this set of people these different learning styles there is no one that is superior to the other. It's just knowing how to maximize them. And then it's possible that your child has two different learning styles that are also equally effective. So finding it out will help you as a parent create the right and proper environment for your child's success and also monitor their progress, what is going on. Like I said in the last video, learning, education, learning, for your child is a collaborative effort between you as a parent and the teacher it's not just the teacher's effort alone so today we're going to unravel the keys to academic excellence so i'll read three different scriptures the first one is proverbs 22 29 it says do you see a man who excels in his work he will stand before kings he will not stand before unknown men this is like verily verily i say unto you he will he will stand before kings second corinthians 8 7 says but as you abound in everything in faith in speech in knowledge in all diligence and in your love for us see that you abound in this grace also so this is about abounding not just in faith oh i have faith that I'm going to excel not just in speech in all the confessions that you make not just in knowledge in going to school and learning there's also diligence in all diligence you just have to mention diligence because diligence and it and, and it says they're in all diligence meaning that diligence is an all-encompassing word so there is a thing that they have to do to there has to be diligence so and in all diligence diligence 
faith is also diligence. Speech is diligence. Knowledge is diligence. Putting it all together in a collaborative effort is diligence. And then the final scripture for this episode is uh, Philippians 4 verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is any pro- anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And then that's Philippians 4. So these scriptures show us that there are things you need to do to be to excel. Philippians 4 it talks about excelling in the area of your mind and your heart. Second Corinthians 8 7 opens us up to the idea that there are things you have to abound in in everything the bible says you have to do everything and then it crowns it with proverbs 22 verse 29 that if you're diligent then you'll stand before kings and not be men and that leads me to the key number one which is diligence what is diligence diligence means being committed to a task doing it and doing it putting the effort that you need to have if you need to grow capacity you grow capacity if you need to develop stamina, you develop stamina. If you need to be disciplined, you need to stay on something to learn it, you stay on it. If you need to get a book and sit up for one hour to read that book, you're diligent enough to do it. You're diligent enough to do your homework. You're diligent enough to look look at TV in the face, turn it off, and go and sit down and study. Yes, I feel like a lot of young people in our generation, you know, just walk through life, confess, and don't do anything about it. Diligence simply means the effort you put in that backs up your faith, your commitment, the things you've said, your confessions are back about them, the things you've said. That's diligence. Diligence is going to bed at the appropriate time so that you can wake up when you should wake up. And go to school on time especially for the auditory learner who needs to be in class and watch and learn and you know listen and learn okay sometimes rushing to school can destabilize a person so for that auditory learner going to school late is not being diligent because you know that in fact for every child going to school late is not being diligent now i'm not trying to castigate everyone because i know that myself have also been guilty of once in a while my children going to school late because there are other factors there are other things but hey the point is ensuring that they are diligent they are not studying just for exam one thing i tell my children is that it's not about the results if you're waiting for the if you if, if it's the result that means you're just waiting for the exam or when you have tests to study it's the process that leads to the result is the things that you learn that actually change you from the inside out that makes this thing come alive some people it's when they pass through school that they begin to find the flame of a certain career path that later they become trailblazers in that career path because they paid attention and they actually allow the things that they learned to seep into their mind not just for them to pass the exam but for it to to educate their mind, to to stretch them in such a way that they know that this is possible. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to become. And see themselves. It is at this stage that they begin to catch the light of what they see themselves becoming. And they need to be diligent about it. Number two is mindset. Mindset. The mind is a powerful tool. That's why we read from Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. The mind is a powerful tool. If you feel that you will fail, you will fail. If you feel that you will not amount to much, guess what? You will be exactly correct. So, in preparing their minds, that's where confession comes in. Positive confession. That's where correcting them in love and not calling them names that you do not want them to exhibit. Calling them things like stupid boy or dick. You will not know anything. Like Father Lexon. You know, all those kind of things. 
it should not be mentioned because you know that you're a prophet and what you say comes to pass and you don't want to be um, pass a message that you don't want to see you don't want to be a prophet of doom over your child how dare you call your child or day or there is a yoruba word for a silly or a stupid person how dare you say that to your child how dare you call your child mumu my son told me that somebody in his school called him mumu and i told him that had he told me he just told me during the holiday i said had you told me during school when your school was in session i will drive to your school i'll drive to your school and have a conversation with your teachers and maybe get a chance an opportunity to speak to the child who called my son a woman because it will be a learning opportunity for him or her and he would know that you don't call a human being who is created in the image of God names right so it would have been a learning opportunity for the child but be that as it may as parents you shouldn't be the one calling them those names correct them in love and and don't scream at them don't shout at them if you haven't told them what you expect if you haven't told them what you want don't don't think that just because they are older then they are all of a sudden they know what's on your heart they don't you have to tell them you have to let them know that what's on your mind can be communicated their mindset the way you speak to them the way you encourage them, the way you, you know, like we say in our normal parlance, gas them up. It really goes a long way to help with understanding the concept that is being taught. So please, it's important that you build up their mindset, you condition their mind. Let them know that they can do it. Let them know that they are, they are capable of getting things done. Whatever they set their minds to do, they can achieve it. Let them know that failure does not mean that they themselves, uh, having failed does not make them a failure. It's when they give up, right? And they're not supposed to be giving up. So that's why you shouldn't also reward just the, the results alone. You reward the process. You reward the effort. You reward the energy that has been expanded. You reward the taking of initiative you commend them oh well done i see that you're doing you're trying to do this you're doing that you reward the initiative you reward the effort you reward the thing that is going in and not just not just uh results number three is environment the environment affects how a child is wired or how a child turns out to a very large degree so what's the environment like is it conducive for learning is it safe are they comfortable is it well we're looking at we're looking at this in two dimensions the school environment and your the home environment is the home environment conducive for learning is it safe um, do they feel threatened at home are there things that happen that make them not want to be at home, especially when you, the parent, is not there. Hmm? So you need to know. You need to put up a system in place. You need to put a system in place that ensures that your home environment is conducive enough for learning. And then the school environment is also very important. How the how their chairs are arranged. How is the school environment? Is it conducive for learning? Is it hot? Are there too many children parked on a chair? Is it close to the restroom? Does it smell? These things actually do matter. Are they excited to go to school? You will find out, you know by the way they behave. Are they excited to go to school? Does it excite them? Does the idea of going to school excite them? So the learning environment, the learning environment, the home environment, it's important that you monitor the vibe that is being given off in these places and then number four is association remember that in the last video and even when i recapped in this video that the audio learner learns also through group study so what association do they have who are their friends and uh, how are this except for older children maybe your teenager 
who is your teenager's best friend? How does the, how is this person or how does this person view academic excellence? Do they just want to pass, or they are interested in actually excelling in being great? Do they have you know? This is where association comes in. This is where you need to pay attention to who your child is rolling with. You pay attention to you see my ideology about friendship and who your child rolls with begins from their ideology about themselves and where they are going if your child if you're able to show them clearly if you're able to show them clearly god's purpose or help them discover god's purpose for themselves or show them especially for young adults and older children right if you if you're able to see teenagers if they're able to see where they are going automatically they know that to get there they need the right association so it's not it's no longer about preaching at them it's no longer about preaching at them not to do this or stay with this kind of person or have this kind of relationship it's now about them defining for themselves what will be ideal for themselves so you see it starts from the home really it starts from the mindset understanding who they are on the inside so their association matters and then number five is guidance guidance simply refers to the direction that you you give them don't leave this solely for the teacher or for maybe the guidance or counselor in school you need to have a conversation with them and don't let them have this impression that there is something they can become that you will not sanction. Especially if both of you have done the work and you have seen that whatever it is that they want to do with themselves is actually who they are wired to be. It's actually what they are wired to become. It's actually how God has created them to be or what God has created them to do. Their purpose, the pulsating beat that aligns with what's in the heart of the master. And that's what we do as Kingdom Parenting Family Center. Encourage you to raise children who, first of all, know what they want. When they know what they want for themselves, it informs the, the, the decisions they make. And knowing what they want would also help you to guide them appropriately. So in that knowing what they want, that's where your guidance comes in. That's where your direction comes in. That's when you ask them questions. You are like their mini coach, right? Their own coach, their home coach. You guide them. You ask questions, you observe, and you talk to them, understand them. You, you regular communication. Parenting is not just about having children. It goes way beyond that. Number six key to academic success is mentoring. I will never stop talking about mentoring. Mentoring is important because if a child is held by the hand early, earlier, some of the mistakes that the other, the mentor made, he will ensure that that child doesn't make it. And mentoring can be physical, it can be one-on-one, -on -one, it can be through books, it can be through relationship and association. It can be through a small group. But mentoring is important. You need to find a mentor for your child. Alternatively, you can be that mentor if you know what mentoring uh, and how to mentor a person. Mentoring is not about just telling them what to do. It's about giving them the wings to discover themselves. And through your words, through your experiences, through examples, through your wisdom, that's what mentoring is about giving them wings to fly so mentoring will sit if, if you're mentoring your child beyond just directing them helping them find their purpose you can share your life story with them tell them <clears throat> excuse me these are the things I did and this is how it turned out this is where you need to be real not just the mom that never came second <laughs> I'm sure you heard that narrative. Mm -hmm. Some of us have heard that narrative. Your parents will tell you, I never came second. I was always first. Look where they are today. <laughs> they always came first. No, not that kind of mentoring in the sense that you share from your wealth of experience, not in a way to condemn them, but in a way to give them wings. 
and tell them what you did. Tell them how you did it. Tell them when you failed, why you failed. And if you feel that you cannot mentor them, especially when they are a bit older and they've, this, that they've been able to discern what they want to do with their lives, you can look for a mentor in that area, in that specific field, and find a way to have a conversation. Thank God there is now Zoom and all sort of platforms that they can meet. And if you have to pay, by all means, mentoring is a key to academic excellence. I remember when my younger sister, my immediate younger sister is a, is a very, is a scholar, right? That's what I like to call her, she's an intelligent girl. And so I remember when she started mentoring the lady who now turned out to be a doctor by telling her how she read, telling her how she discovered, you know, why she wanted to excel academically and how he's going to glorify God and all of those things. This helped my younger sister as well, not immediate, but the, I think the fifth child, it helped her to now zero in, understand how she learns best. And in her first degree, because she has two degrees, in her first degree, she had a first class. Now she has qualified as a medical doctor and she also she's graduating with double honors and that's because she was mentored. She was mentored. So your child needs a mentor. And finally, the seventh key is guess what? The spiritual dimension. It was not seven because it's the least important. In fact, it's the, it's the most important part. But with prayers alone and there is no work, you don't put in all of these keys. But with prayers, by the time your child is diligent, you ensure that the mindset is right, you correct what needs to be corrected in the learning environment, their association is right, you guide them, they have mentoring in place, prayer is boom, and everything just lights up. You pray over them, you pray with them, you pray for them. Praying over your child is when you actually place your hand. Step into your prophetic office. Hmm? Cast out your CEO garment and wear your cloak of a prophet. Ask them, your cloak of a priest. Ask them to kneel down and you pray over them. Then when you pray with them, you are like their friend. You hold them by the hand and you pray with them. You tell them what to pray. You tell them how to pray. And then when you pray for them, so when you put on your prophetic garment and you pray for them and you begin to make decrees and declarations over their lives they you give them confessions to say and they say it and it enters into their minds one of the confessions that we say is i have the mind of christ anything i conceive anything i'm able to conceive i can achieve how powerful that is. I have the mind of Christ. Anything that my mind can conceive, my, I can achieve. Let them say this over and over again. And they will see where it will lead them. Thank you so much for sticking here, watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Watch this video. Send it to people who you think will benefit from it and if you haven't downloaded your confession what are you waiting for click the link below the box download the confession enter your email what's it i'll just send you emails <laughs> and uh or you go to the instagram page you, you go to the link in the bio subscribe get your your confession and you're on your way thank you for watching up to this point Thank you so much for sticking with me. I don't take it for granted. See you in episode three. Bye for now.